So there's a few more things about the Poisson process that we want to discuss. One of these is what we call the independent increments property. And this definition right here provides us a definition of what we mean by independent increments. Basically, it says that the random variables x at time t1, x at time t2, minus x at time t1. So this is a random variable right here. It's the difference between the random process at time t2 and the random process at time t1, and then all the way down. So basically, the random variable differences are independent. Okay. So this does not say that x of t1 is independent of x of t2, but it, this property does say that x of t1 is independent of x of t2 minus x of t1. So this shouldn't sound too surprising. Um, for the Poisson process, the fact that x of t1 and x of t2 are probably not independent makes sense, because if x at time t1 is already 7, we know that x at time t2 is either 7 or bigger. So it makes sense that those quantities would be very correlated to each other. But when you think about what this quantity means, x at time t2 minus x at time t1, this is basically the number of arrivals that have happened in the time interval from t1 to t2. So it would make sense that the number of arrivals that have happened during this time interval is independent of the total number that have happened up until then. So this differencing provides us this independent increments property. So the way I've described this definition here, this independent increments property, I discussed it very much with respect to the Poisson process because the Poisson process has this property, but any random process such that x of t1 and this difference and this difference and this difference for basically all n, whenever these are independent, that's what we call an independent increments random process. Specifically, again, now for the Poisson process, what we're saying is the number of arrivals in non-overlapping time intervals are independent. And really what this gets back to is how we constructed the Poisson process. The Poisson process was built up really from exponential random variables. Remember that exponential random variables drove the inter-arrival time sequence, which is how we constructed the Poisson process. Exponential random variables have a memoryless property, and because of that, really, is why we have this independent increments property of the Poisson process that tells us that when we're dealing with the number of arrivals on different time intervals, as long as those time intervals don't touch each other or overlap, then those numbers of arrivals are independent. This property is very useful when we want to do different types of computations, so let's take a look at that next. So let's use the independent increments property to perform this computation right here. So let's compute the two-dimensional joint probability mass function at time t1 and t2 for our Poisson process. So what we're really trying to figure out is what's the probability at time t1 that I've had n1 arrivals, and at time t2 I've had n2 arrivals. So mathematically it means this, the probability that at time t1 we've had n1, and at time t2, we've had n2. So if I was going to write down um, the definition of what this means, this is kind of the first thing I would do. From here, though, we can use the independent increments property. So as I go from this joint probability computation to this next line, I'm still doing a joint um, probability computation, but I've switched things around just a little bit. The first coordinate here doesn't change at all. I'm still wanting to know the probability that at time t1 I've had n1 arrivals, but on this second part I've replaced n at t time t2 equaling n2 with an equivalent expression. I'm going to compute the probability that the difference between the number of arrivals at time t2 and the number of arrivals at time t1 is equal to the difference n2 minus n1. These probabilities are exactly the same thing. If I really have n1 arrivals at time t1 and n2 arrivals at t2, that's the same thing as having n1 arrivals at t1 and having had n2 minus n1 arrivals during the time interval t2 minus t1, or on the interval t1 to t2. So these are completely equivalent and identical expressions, but we've been able to rewrite the probability we're trying to compute using this difference. Being able to rewrite it this way is important because we now know something about the Poisson process, namely that this random variable, 
and this random variable, this difference random variable, are independent because the Poisson process has the independent increments property. So instead of having to do this probability computation in a joint sense, since these are independent random variables, I can split it into the product of two individual probability computations. The probability that n at time t1 is equal to n1 times the probability that this random variable is equal to n2 minus n1. Writing down these probabilities is now very simple. What is n at time t1? Well, that's just a Poisson random variable. So I can write down the probability mass function that tells me the probability at time t1 that I've had n1 arrivals. So that part's easy. What about this? Well, we know that the difference of Poisson random variables is just a Poisson random variable itself. So this is really just a Poisson random variable that we evaluate at t2 minus t1, and the probability that we're evaluating it for the number of rivals is this number, n2 minus n1. So all I have to do is plug into my Poisson random variable um, probability PDF, or a PMF, I'm sorry, probability mass function, for t2 minus t1 and n2 minus n1, and I can write this down. And then we do the same thing for their support. Remember, the probability mass function for this has a really a ut1 here because the Poisson process starts at time zero and goes to the right. Same thing here. So we do worry about turning on and off this probability um, with the unit step functions as needed. So that's why this independent increments property is so important. It really lets us simplify these joint probability computations into just a whole bunch of individual products and we can write the probabilities of those down very easily. We can also use the independent increments property to help us compute the autocorrelation function of the Poisson process. So let's go ahead and compute the autocorrelation function of the Poisson process, which we mean by this, whose fundamental definition is this expectation. Since our Poisson process is a real valued process, we don't care about the conjugate, so we get this line. And then from here to here, I'm going to just rewrite this quantity in kind of a funny way. So the n at time t1, I have brought right here, that hasn't changed. But n at time t2, I've written in kind of a funny way. This quantity right here, if you write this out, it's n at time t1 plus n at time t2 minus n at time t1. So the term here, n at time t1, and this term, n at time t1, they cancel each other and you're left with just n at time t2. So I haven't changed anything. Here I had n at time t2, and here I had n at time t2. But I'm trying to work in these difference quantities so I can exploit the fact that the Poisson process has the independent increments property and help me simplify this computation. So this is just kind of a weird way of writing this line. And now let's go ahead and multiply things out. So let's leave our expectation, and let's go ahead and distribute this multiplication. So n at time t1 times n at time t1 gives me n squared at time t1. And then I have to take n at time t1 times this quantity, so I get this quantity here. And then I've gone ahead and distributed the expectation as well. I end up with the expectation of this plus the expectation of n at time t1 times this difference but I went ahead and factored out an E on both of those. So why did I do that? Well, it goes back to the independent increments property. This random variable is independent of this random variable. So instead of having a single expectation on the product of n at time t2 minus n at time t1 quantity times n at time t1, I was able to write it as two expectations and their product because of the independent increments property. From here to here, we now can just do a write down. What is the expected value of the Poisson process at time t1? Well, it's equal to lambda times t1. What is the expected value of the Poisson process at time t2 minus the Poisson process at time t1? Well, it's just the rate times that time interval, lambda times the quantity t2 minus t1. What about this part right here? So if we go back to our fundamental equation, variance equals mean squared minus the mean squared, and we rearrange that, we see that we can write the second moment as variance plus mean squared. So variance for a Poisson process is just lambda t. So since we're talking about t1 here, we have lambda t1. 
the mean for a Poisson process is just lambda t. Since we're talking about t1 here, the mean squared is lambda t1 quantity squared, so that's why we have a lambda squared t1 squared here. So because of the independence increment property and the funny way of writing it here, we can easily compute the autocorrelation function to be this. And then look what happens. This stays here. I have a lambda squared t1 squared here, but I have a lambda minus t1 times lambda t1. That's lambda squared t1 squared negative. So this and this cancel, and I'm left with just a lambda t2 times lambda t1, or lambda squared t1 t2. During this entire computation, I've assumed that t2 was greater than t1. That's what let me kind of do some of this here. So for the case where t2 is greater than t1, I now know my autocorrelation function is equal to this. If you repeat the math for the case where we assume t1 is less than t2, you basically get the exact same answer down here, except that this is a t2. So the general result for any values t1 and t2, this is the same, so it stays right here, but since this part changes based on who is smallest, this is the general form for the autocorrelation function. The autocorrelation function is equal to lambda times the minimum of t1 or t2 plus lambda squared t1, t2. So that wraps up our discussion of the Poisson random process. We now know what it looks like. We know what its mean function is. We know what its variance function is. We know what its autocorrelation function is. We know that it has this nice property called the independent increments property, which it essentially inherits from the exponential random variables that we use to construct the process. And that property is useful for doing these types of computations and other probability computations as well.